Well, then we got some emails. Okay. So, uh, uh, this, is, this all goes into one topic, and hopefully, we're going to finish it in seven minutes. Here you go. This is an article. I'm asking you kindly, gently, please, sugar on top, anything I can say. This is a very good friend of mine, Dara Kerr, who writes for the markup, who's moving to bigger and better things in January, but I'm not going to tell what it is. She will have to announce that. This story she worked on for four, four months. She is the best investigative journalist when it comes to rideshare in the country by miles. Okay. This is a long article. All facts with whistleblowers in the article. And this guy here, right here, poor guy. And he, she discovered something very sinister that's going on. So what is that? So when a driver gets carjacked or stabbed or hurt in any other fashion by a passenger, there is a police report and also vice versa. So somehow she discovered, and she had two whistleblowers in this article, okay, not one, but two, and, and one after another, driver after driver coming forward, saying that Uber delays responding to law enforcement when law enforcement asks for information on a specific trip to solve the crime faster. But somehow Uber says, nah, I don't think we're going to respond to this one. Or well, maybe we'll respond to this one. Please, this is at the markup. Go to markup.com. And this is this story just came out December 9th, three, four days ago. I tweeted it. I think it's an amazing investigative piece. Okay, and you guys will know what this is all about. I'm not going to go into it's like a 20 minute read, literally 15 minute read. And it reads beautifully. And she's done an amazing job. Dara, two thumbs up, four thumbs up, whatever thumbs I have up for you. <laughs> so please go read this. And this story goes into and this guy, by the way, was carjacked, the one in the picture. And Uber did not do anything about it. In fact, Uber took their time to report to the police and the same people, by the way, who carjacked this guy, this driver, were involved in multiple other crimes against drivers. But then, you know, uh, to me, it's like, look, I'm not going to beat Uber up. In certain cases, look, we know what just happened three days ago, okay? Without getting mm -hmm. too grim or depressing, <clears throat> there was this poor lady in Louisiana. <clears throat> I mean, it breaks my heart, right? So <clears throat> she's driving Uber. Again, I'm not saying it's Uber's fault. There are sick, crazy pieces of shit on this planet, okay? And, and she gave a ride to this guy. This guy stabbed her, let her bleeding, walked into her hotel room in Louisiana, in New Orleans, and videotaped the whole shit and put it on Facebook. This is where humanity is today, okay? Sick mm -hmm. assholes, okay? Again, I'm not blaming Uber, okay? But this story directly blames Uber taking their time responding to law enforcement. So then they go arrest this guy. And, and FYI, she, used, she was doing this as a side hustle. She works for the Louisiana Police Department. So, okay. So when they interviewed this guy, this asshole criminal, who probably should not have been on the platform anyway, said, oh, I just woke up this morning, felt like killing somebody. And I called on Uber because that's, that, that my victim comes to me. I'm like, if this is not the pits of humanity, bro, I don't know where where our lives are, okay? Mm -hmm. And and to me, this is too much, right? I mean, a driver getting stabbed, killed, this, that, that. Come on. About this guy saying, oh, oh, uh, they, I asked him specifically. I go, why did you pick this driver? He goes, I didn't pick this driver. Uber picked this driver. Now, again, I'm not saying anything that Uber did wrong. It was a trip. This guy ordered it, felt like killing somebody, and he, he killed somebody. There's a 52-year-old wonderful woman dead in Louisiana, right? This happens quite often. So now I get this letter from this wonderful gentleman in Houston. And, you know, this, this will segue into our letters from driver's segment. Now, another favor I'm trying to ask, just like I asked to read Dara Kerr's article, please, this guy created um, a petition for everybody to sign. And he allowed me to put his name up here. Okay. Otherwise I would have never done it. His name is Babajude Sarumi. And this guy was a 
Iraq veteran, by the way. Okay, so thank you, sir. And that's the that's the link. Please go sign his petition. It's for safety of drivers. Okay, and it's at change.org. If you go to change.org or put his name, you will get to it, or we will put that link also in the show notes. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try to interview him actually. And long story short, um, you know, he, he was robbed at gunpoint of January of this year. January of this year. Okay. January 28th. He even sent me the trip. It was a short trip at two freaking o'clock in the morning. I have it. I'm going to do an article on this. I'm just, I'm so passionate about this shit. He go, he, they took him around the block. They got out of the car. He drives a black Dodge Avenger. They got out of the car and the, and, and Babajide says, well, the next minute, I'm thinking this trip is over. There is a gun pointed to my head on my passenger window and there's a gun pointed to my head on the driver window. So he's like having flashbacks. He didn't die in Iraq, but now he's thinking that's it. His life is over, right? So they're yelling at him, get the F out of the car. So he gets out of the car and he's just running as fast as he can, hoping that they don't shoot him in the back. Okay. So he goes, I immediately obeyed him, got out of the car and ran for my life and told him, you can have the car, you can have whatever you want. At that point, I was afraid he could still shoot me in the back. So I kept running as fast as I could. The case is still being investigated by Detective Z. This is in Houston, Texas, right? Uber did nothing to rectify the situation. I have the screenshots of the Uber conversation that's going back and forth. Uber basically said, yo, you want a rental? You want to keep driving? No, I just got fucking carjacked. Okay, I don't want to. But anyway, so what happens? These two kids, because they were juveniles, they, they took the car and guess what? They crashed the freaking car, the freaking guy's car. And here's a picture of the car after the crash. That's his, that's his car. They crashed the car doing another crime. Okay, now irony of fucking ironies, Chris. Guess what? I'm thinking Texas laws are tough. These two are going to rot in jail for carjacking. Oh, no. He goes, he got his car back from Houston Police Department from storage a month after the accident. The thieves Uber passengers were involved in a serious crash after using my car in another robbery. Hello. Safety team call me. On the Tuesday after the Sunday of the incident, never heard back from them again. I later followed up to realize that they had completely neglected the report and said it fell through the cracks. This goes back with the story we just said about Dara's story, Dara Kerr story. Mm -hmm. So they go, everything falls through the fucking cracks. This guy got goddamn carjacked, bro. Okay, now and it goes on. Now, this is this is the part that I go. I must have emailed them probably 20 times back and forth because I'm not believing what I'm reading. I'm saying this guy is full of shit to the driver. When he sends me the proof one after another, he goes, this was the trip that happened. This is what my car looked like. This is what's happening. Now I'm going like, holy crap, this is for real. Now they only offered to get me into a rental vehicle to start driving again, but I declined since my car was being repaired. The detective who's in charge Call me to do a PI, positive ID, on one of the passengers. I remembered his face and pointed out his picture. He has been arrested. Now, this blew me away, okay? And I said, this, I'm not buying. I'm not believing. Well, you guys will see the screenshot now. He has been arrested and given a deal not to go to trial. He agreed to pay me back $4,000 cost of repairs to my damaged vehicles at the rate of $100 a month. So weird and crazy. On the other hand, it's better than Uber that did nothing. Now, this shit is going on way too long. Okay. Again, safety. And guess what? Here is the goddamn report dated October 28th. The settlement that they reached, I blacked out the inform important information. And it says right there, as of January uh, 23rd, 2022, right? Uh, on a, and they charge this, these these juveniles with au unauthorized use of vehicle. I'm thinking Texas have tougher laws. These guys are going to rot in jail. They're not even going to jail. Now, this criminal is going to pay this poor guy $100 a month starting 12 10 2022 What are the odds he's getting his 100 bucks a month, Chris? Hopefully, but this is ridiculous. 
Think about this, bro. This is where we are at Uber drivers. For, and the trip was a minimum fare. It was a $3 trip. Look what this guy's gone through since January. Right? So That's what does it say? This says you are on your own, number one, obviously. All the buttons you have, the safety buttons on the Uber app is not going to help you. Number two, a lot of things fall through the cracks. This is a carjacking. This is, a, this is not like a simple crime. This is a serious shit. And number mm -hmm. three, and number three is... Listen, man, I'm telling you guys, when you are driving, you have to have your safety guards up. But when you're running into situations like this, and mm -hmm. look, I don't know the details on this, but and I'm not going to make assumptions because I don't want to look like an ass to Uber who's watching probably. And I'm not going to say these people, these juveniles should not have been on the platform, probably, right? Probably a fake account, but I'm not saying it is. But what this guy went through since January, and Uber not offering help to this guy is is ridiculous. Okay, this mm. guy went through a carjacking, and now the the even law enforcement is making him do a deal with the criminal who carjacked him for hundred bucks a month. I mean, what is this world coming to? I don't know. So on that one, I think that was my last breath. There you go. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's crazy, and that's the whole thing. It seems like the stories are ramping up. I mean, we we always hear it. You know, we always are paying attention. Sergio, myself, everybody else, you know, we're all paying attention. We know what's going on, but it just seems like more recently you start seeing these, these worse and worse and worse stories that are happening. And, you know, you never know when, where, anything like that. So, you know, the biggest thing is you got to do what you can to take care of yourself because, you know, I'm sorry to say, but if you call the, if, if, if you use the tools that are in your toolkit, or even if you just bypass it and call 911, you know, it, it, when seconds mean the difference between life and death, you got to do what you got to do. So make sure you, you know, do what you can. So I recommend quite a few different things. Just being smart, being in, in the right location, keeping, you know, aware. Um, unfortunately, that can only get you so far. So protection, you know, things like that when it comes to it. Um, you know, learning how to defend yourself is another way. Um, these types of things, hey, you know, rather be judged by uh, six than carried by, or I'm sorry, he'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. So yep, um, you got to do what you got to do because nobody else in the end is going to uh, come at you. And unfortunately, we're seeing these types of things happen more and more when it comes to the criminal justice system. Um, yep. There is a huge hole right now when it comes to accountability and, you know, keeping people uh, locked up essentially for the crimes that they commit. So um, this is something where you're going to have to take it into your own hands and do what you have to do to keep you, yourself, your belongings, your car uh, safe and okay. So when you go home at the end of the day to your family, to friends, whatever it might be, you can. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.